corporate politicians might have to wear their corporate logos. Welcome to the pilot episode of Good News Next Week. I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Good News Next Week, grown out of New World Next Week, the long-running series between myself and James Corbett, where over the course of 2014 and 2015, we realized how important it was to add in positive stories, solution-oriented stories, ways that we are winning. So all through 2015, every episode of New World Next Week had a hashtag Good News Next Week story. And about halfway through 2015, when I decided I was going to relaunch Media Monarchy 2.0, 3.0, call it what you want, I knew that a spinoff for Good News Next Week had to be part of that as part of this way of learning our way forward and not constantly raging against, raging against the machine, but building our own ways forward. So we'll stick to hopefully the same format, three stories. Maybe we'll have a guest co-host. Maybe we won't. We'll figure these things out as we move forward. And again, we always appreciate your help and support at MediaMonarchy.com slash support. Hashtag good news next week. The Free State Project crosses the 90% threshold and gets close to triggering the mass move. Now, I've had people telling me about the Free State Project for a long, long time at Media Monarchy but it somewhat existed outside of my periphery. Now, Reason has been covering it for a long, long time. Free State Project crosses 90% threshold, so that means over 18,000 people have pledged to move to New Hampshire and fight for smaller government. So when the number hits 20,000, the big move is supposed to occur. So the quote from Free State Project calls it an unprecedented movement. Once 20,000 libertarians pledge to participate, it will quote-unquote trigger the move, and they'll make their way to New Hampshire within five years. The organization's now exceeded 90% of its goal, with more than 18,000 pledged participants and almost 2,000 early movers have already made New Hampshire their home with fresh faces coming in every week. They say it's a culmination of a decade of work and just months away from hitting the 20%, or rather 20,000 participant goal. So early movers, they note, have purchased about $40 million in New Hampshire real estate, and many have brought their own businesses and jobs along with them. Now, no one thing is the panacea, cure-all, fix-all, and there are hundreds of comments on this recent article about the ups and downs and yays and nays about this, but ultimately people living in an intentional way is part of, I think, the ways we're winning and easily a good news next week story. Another one submitted to us by Sean Cathcart on Twitter using hashtag good news next week. California politicians could soon be forced to wear logos of their top corporate donors, and this has been a meme for a long time, and the report comes from Activist Post, where they talk about a guy named John Cox who has a long time been a gadfly and agitator to corrupt California politicians. And ultimately, this might never actually work, but I think sometimes sort of political theater or street theater sort of monkey-wrenching the New World Order, as Jello Biafra would call it, I think is important, and it shines a light on the ridiculous situations we find ourselves in. Ridiculous situations and times, I guess, call for somewhat ridiculous measures. So they are on the case. They're hitting the tallies to be able to actually go out and then get signatures and see if they could actually get this on the ballot in California. The group is called California is not for sale. A couple other things we'll look at. Twitter reinstates politwoops. So that's an account that basically archives politicians' tweets that get deleted sometimes after they realize it's going to cause a kerfuffle. So this account, I think, gobbles all of those up and hopefully keeps those so you can see, again, what corporate logos your corporate politician is wearing and just what they're saying out of either sides of their mouths, whether it's tweets or their real mouths. The third and final story we'll take a quick look at on this pilot quickie episode of Good News Next Week. Little Food World Order action. Around the country, organic farmers are pushing for GE-free zones in the Washington Post reports Jackson County, Oregon, just joined the small but growing ranks of GE-free zones in the U.S., which prohibit the cultivation of genetically engineered crops, GE crops or GMOs. It's at least the eighth county in the country to create such an ordinance, and efforts are springing up to pass similar measures in other places. So the decision in Jackson County, Oregon, was made final December 22nd when a federal judge approved a consent protecting the zone. So they passed this. They voted for this in May of 2014. And then it was challenged by alfalfa farmers and that it violated Oregon state law, but then rejected by a federal judge in May and a court approved settlement 
which upholds the GE free zone but allows the alfalfa farmers to keep their crop for the remainder of its useful life. So this went down just a couple of weeks ago, again, December 22nd, 2015. And I think this shows all eyes are on Oregon this week. And this is good news next week episode for the first week of January in 2016. A new world, but a lot of the same old 2015 problems, of course, hanging around. And as we noted on the final episode of New World Next Week for 2015, where we look back at that year and look ahead now at this year, I said 2015 seemed to be the divide and conquer year. So a situation going on in Oregon right now is playing that tune to a T, I think. And we again see everybody jumping in to things they have very little understanding about. I think in other ways, Oregon can be looked at as sort of the positive mover that it is. And again, moving against these kind of... The battle against GMOs and GE is the pesticides. That's what it's about. Organic food, if it's following the letter of the law, doesn't have a bunch of pesticides on it. That's a lot of what the battle is about, and that's what the labeling is all about. You can still make those choices. GMO crops might not instantly kill you. Of course they won't, but it might be slow, and we know the studies aren't there. So let's look at Jackson County as a positive good news next week story for Oregon as all eyes are sort of, again, turning something one into a silly meme with the Al-Qaeda and all those goofy things, but also a really serious note that people are pushing and pushing and pushing, again, on all sides of the fences for more divide and conquer. And we're not going to fall for it because we're about positive solution-oriented things, and that's why we're doing good news next week. One last note I'll make on a good news note is the band The Slants recently won their trademark case, as you may have heard about. It was a massive news story in the last couple of weeks of December 2015, and instead of jumping to conclusions about what it means or what it affects the Redskins or not, they're in Portland, so I hit him up. I talked to Simon Tam for 15 minutes. Our whole audio interview is posted up, and he walks through the Slants trademark decision and what it means and what it doesn't mean, and we are working on a video of that as well behind the scenes. I thank you so much for watching. Please like and share and do all those things that you do to help spread the word about independent, alternative, non-commercial media and keep submitting Good News Next Week stories for us. We'll do these every week. Hashtag good news next week. Thank you so much for watching. James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com reminding you, as always, don't hate the media, become the media.